Happy Tuesday, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Disrupt Your Now with me, your host, Lisa Kipps Brown, and my guest tonight is Dean Wegner. Dean, I met Dean several years ago through LinkedIn, and uh, I think I met you, Dean, because of the, the NASCAR team and my background yes. with the military and working with that. But I want to I want to tell you a little bit about Dean, and then I'm going to get him to tell you more about his background. He is doing something that I am so excited about. He's bringing manufacturing back to America, made in the USA. And I'm not talking about sewing a button on and then saying it's made in the USA. I'm talking about everything made in the USA the way it used to be. So, Dean, welcome to the show. And I can't wait for you to tell everybody about your background and how you got started down this path, because I know it couldn't have been easy. Well, Lisa, it's Tuesday night, like you said, it's 6 p.m. here in Nashville Music City, but I am fired up, so I'm honored to be your guest. Thanks. So where do you want to start? You want to start with me? Is that where you want to start yeah, with? Yeah, I want you to tell them a bit about your background and how you ended up here. And of course, I want you to tell them about the military, you know, your yeah. military background and how you ended up in the in, um, apparel industry. Well, we'll touch on it all, Lisa, but first and foremost, I always, I always like to start with what's most important. And when people say, Dean, what's most important to you? I always say the same three things every time because it's very consistent. And for me, it's really three words. It's God, you know, family and country. And my Christian faith is absolutely first and foremost in my life. And that's where I always start. And then very closely after that, Lisa, for me, it's all about my family. Mm -hmm. My wife, Kelly, and I, this year, we celebrated 27 years. Awesome. Congratulations. And thank you very much. And those who've had experience with me know sometimes I can be a lot to put up with. So it's a big tribute to Kelly. Yeah. <laughs> she's to deal with. <laughs> and then, Lisa, we have four amazing kids. So we have two daughters, 23 and 20. We have a 17-year-old son, and we also have an 11-year-old son we adopted from Ethiopia. I love that. So family is just incredibly important to me. And then from a country standpoint, you know, was very privileged and thankful to have an opportunity to attend West Point. Mm -hmm. You know, I graduated from West Point in 1993. So went to flight school, learned how to fly helicopters, went to the Army Special Forces Ranger School, and then served seven years of active duty in the Army. And I always like to highlight those three, at least not only because that's what's most important to me, God, family, and country. But those three really are interwoven into what we're doing right now with Authentically American. And four years ago, it was a blank sheet of paper. I always show this visual, Lisa, that four years ago was my business plan. Oh, my God. It was a blank sheet of paper. You, so, well, OK, before you get started, though, when that was your business plan, were you already thinking an apparel company or you were just thinking, I want to start a business? So it, there's a little bit of story behind that. So in 2012, Lisa. You know, I bought my first business. Okay. And you were, and I were talking earlier about the heyday of the apparel industry and the textile industry. Mm -hmm. And I bought a company that was 18 years old that had an incredible history producing dress uniforms for the military. Oh, okay. And what was pretty neat, Lisa, was the old dress trousers, the old dress pants I wore in the army. <laughs> that was one of our contracts. That's so cool. So it was thousands of dress uniforms every week for Army, Navy, Air Force, and Marines. And I loved it because I loved my time in the military. And I thought this was a great way to get connected back to the military. Mm -hmm. And what I also loved, Lisa, I learned the history behind the apparel industry. So it really gets back to what you and I were talking a little earlier. Because when I graduated from West Point in 93, just to give everybody tuning in a little historical context, when I graduated from West Point in 93, over 50% of the apparel in the U.S. was made in the U.S. And today, Lisa, today it's less than three. Yes, it's very sad. I mean, that is all that's made here. And, and I want to tell y'all, Dean and I were talking, because when I first got out of college, I actually worked in the textile industry for an um, international company called Burlington Industries. And Dean, the when I, I was in the controller training program, and as part of that, I worked out in the coning plant, which is where we got the wool literally straight off the backs of the sheep from like Australia and New Zealand and stuff. And, oh, you know, yeah. they clean it and comb it. And I used to see military people come through mm -hmm. all the time, you know, doing the tour and inspecting and so forth, because we also made uniforms. Love it. Love it. And that's, you know, a rich part of the history of our country. Mm -hmm. And Lisa, one of the things professionally I'm most passionate about is job creation. 
Yep. And when I bought this business, I thought, well, I want to win more contracts because then I thought we'll create more jobs. But as I really understood the business, I had this epiphany and realized that we don't actually create jobs. We're a government contractor and this is a bidding process. So if Lisa, you had the contract before me and my price was lower, mm -hmm. you know, those jobs in essence transfer to me. Yeah. So it's not really a job creation, it's job transfer. True. And, yeah. And after the army, I spent a lot of time at Procter and Gamble working on brands like Crest and Tide. Okay. Also spent a lot of times working on brands like M&Ms and Snickers. So had some incredible marketing and branding, just some world-class training experience working on these iconic brands. And as I was realizing that we're a government contract, we're not actually creating jobs, Lisa, this is when the wheels really started turning. Mm -hmm. I thought, what if, what if instead of being a government contractor, what if we built a brand? Yeah. And I thought, Lisa, what if, you know, back to that 3% number, what if we chose the road less traveled? And instead of what 97% of companies do and produce overseas because it's cheap labor, yeah. what if we made the intentional choice to produce right here? Mm -hmm. I started to think, what if, think of the difference we could make. Think of the jobs we can write, create and ultimately if we're successful in delivering on our vision to build this iconic American brand, that's truly American made, this iconic American brand that has the same brand recognition of a Nike or Polo mm -hmm. or Under Armour. Think of the incredible legacy we could leave. Yeah. And, and literally then, helping rebuild an industry, oh, a once huge thriving American industry. And Lisa, you said a lot of entrepreneurs tune in mm -hmm. to this show. <laughs> and four years ago, back to that blank sheet of paper, that business plan, after four years, I'm exhausted. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> I, I'm exhausted because, I mean, literally nothing existed. So the branding, the marketing, the whole supply chain, we now have contract manufacturing across 12 states, oh. our CRM, our finances. I mean, I could go on and on and on. Nothing existed. Mm -hmm. so Lisa, I'm exhausted, but I am even more energized because when you start with a blank sheet of paper, you can be so intentional about who you are. So true. And what you stand for and your values. And that's not only what fires me up, that's what energizes our entire team. Because if I could have my team, everybody spend two minutes with you, you'd get that same consistent theme. Like we're all tired. We're all working hard. We're giving everything we got, but we are fired up. Fired up. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I'm really glad that you brought that up mm -hmm. because, you know, the being tired, but being intentional, because that's one of the things that I always tell my audience and my clients is it's your business and you can make it anything you want. And Absolutely. too many people just look at what everybody else is doing and they go, they're doing that. That's what I have to do. And it's like, why own a business? Just go get a job. And I love that you from the very beginning did it intentionally. You know, what were your values behind it? How you wanted to build it? Everything. I love it. Well, Lisa, you're highlighting one of my favorite words, and that is intentional. And, you know, from a brand standpoint, we're a premium apparel brand, mm -hmm. but there are ethos behind it. And these were intentional choices because we are a brand that celebrates patriotism. We are a brand that believes in the American worker, which is why everything we do is produced here in the U.S., and another intentional choice tied to the third one is we're a brand that wants to honor our American heroes. Mm -hmm. So very intentionally, we donate 10% of our profits to veteran and first responder charities. And that's a way for us each and every day to honor our American heroes. That's awesome. And, and every day your people are at work and they are knowing that not only are they helping their family and your customers, that they are helping our heroes. Absolutely. Because a lot of people, Lisa, will say, well, Dean, why did you go down this entrepreneurial path in the first place? Mm -hmm. And it is really that insatiable desire I have to know that I'm making a difference. Yes. And when we made that intentional choice around 10% of our profits, you know, that's a reminder each and every day for everyone on the team that the better job we do, you know, the greater the difference we can make. Yeah. Yeah. It, the last chapter of my book is actually about business meaning more than money. So, oh, wow. you know, yeah, yeah. Dis disrupt your nail. Yeah. And so, you know, I wish that I could have gotten you in the book 
um, I had reached out. You probably don't even remember because it was last year. I had wanted to get with you and interview you. It was like between our two schedules. Oh, I remember. We just never fit yeah. in. So you'll have to be in the next one. <laughs> well, the second new edition would be honored to be a part yeah. of it. I just made a note because I had forgotten that you were an esteemed author. Oh, yeah. Well, this is actually my third book. Yes. So, but it took me 10 months to write it. And the one before it took me a weekend because everything was already oh. in my head. And I just had to get it out. And mm -hmm. in this, I had to interview 50 people. And then figure it kept evolving. The book kept evolving. Yeah. So I laugh. I told, I told my friends and husband, I'm like, I've never done anything that took that long except have a baby. And even that didn't take 10 months. <laughs> I mean, except for my business, you know, uh -huh. I've had my business for 25 years and I've been married for 34 years in November. Love so, that. um, you know, I've done things that took a long time, but as far as a project, uh, a so project. I'm exhausted from that. Yeah. Well, it's all come together and I look too forward to reading it and being a part of the second one. Yeah, that'll be great. But so, yeah, back to your your people and you, y'all know every day that 10 percent of what you're doing is going to help other people. And just any time that, in my opinion, mm -hmm. any time that you're serving something that's bigger than yourself, it always makes the journey more fulfilling and even easier, even if it's harder. It makes oh. it easier because you can always look at that thing that you're working towards. Lisa, that was a, another intentional choice because I don't want anyone who works at Authentically American to think of this as just a job. Yeah. And I'm just punching the clock. And that's why our vision is this iconic American brand, but the heart of our mission Lisa is our passion for job creation. And that's also why we made that intentional choice to donate 10% because we want people to be, you know, fired up and engaged and really want to be a part of something special, really yeah. be on this journey with us. And not only is it not just mm -hmm. a job, it's also that is not just a gimmick. It's something, you know, a lot of companies will slap whatever veterans logos or whatever on because they know it's a good marketing mm -hmm. ploy with y'all it's from the heart it's literally part of the fabric if you will pardon the pun part yes. of the fabric of the actual company and so they have to take so much pride in that knowing that it's this intentional honest serious choice well lisa it is and you know another way to look at that is a lot of companies will play games yeah. and if you read the tag it will say designed in the u.s yes mm -hmm. or assembled in the u.s mm -hmm. and i rarely say never i don't believe in that but one of the things i will 100 percent say never never ever never will we produce overseas awesome. because ultimately that vision to build this iconic american brand you know with brands i've worked on like crest and tide and m m's it's a massive threshold in my mind. It's a billion dollars. Mm -hmm. and if we keep growing and growing and growing and we keep getting there, but at one point we level off because there's no more capacity in the U.S., mm -hmm. that's a choice we will easily make because it's more important to stay true to who we are and, you know, to be authentic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, back during like World War II, this is something that I've, I've been preaching for like 20 years. I'm like, if we had not had our factories, there is no way that we could have done the things that we did militarily. There's no way that the men could have gone to war and Rosie the River or the women go to work and they, they give up their pantyhose because we're making this, that and the other. You know, I mean, it's like industries, just as we did with COVID, industries were able to adapt and make things that were needed. That's what we need to be able to do at any point in time, no matter what the what the emergency situation is. And it, but if you don't have any factories, you can you're dead in the water. Absolutely, Lisa. And I should tell you a couple stories because this highlights one what's ultimately most important to us now as a brand. Mm -hmm. But one of the shifts I had to make because in 2017, Lisa, when it was a blank sheet of paper, I thought everyone was like you. I yeah. thought everyone was like me, very patriotic. I thought everyone, just the sheer fact that we're American made was going to love our brand. 
Mm -hmm. And sadly, what I heard and sadly, what I found out, Lisa, is most people don't care. That's right. They're looking and, for that half a cent savings. Yeah. And at first, Lisa, I was angry. I mean, I was upset. I'm like, how could anyone not embrace what we're doing? But as I really thought through it and I calmed down, I'm like, it makes sense. And yeah. reason being, we ultimately, Lisa, we are a consumer brand. And if you or somebody tuning in goes to our website, authenticallyamerican.us, they make a purchase and they get the product, they open it up and like, this is awful. I mean, <laughs> who cares where it's made, Lisa? Yeah. It doesn't matter. Right. And I'll highlight two things. So one it relates to the story on the incredible blessing we've had with the incredible national TV exposure we've had. Yeah. I mean, we were just back on national TV on Labor Day and... Over the last three years, we've been on national TV 16 times. I know. I feel like I'm always seeing you on there. Where's <laughs> Dean? <laughs> it's incredible. And it's been a blessing. But the very first time was back in 2018. Mm -hmm. And it was on Fox and Friends. Okay. And this was pre-COVID. So we're in studio. Yeah. And behind the scenes, behind in studio, Lisa, I met a gentleman named Pete Hegseth. Yeah. Yep. So Pete Hegseth, for those who aren't familiar, he's a fellow Army veteran, just an all around great guy. And he is also the host of Fox and Friends Weekend. And I always bring gifts with me, Lisa. So this was a pair of our consumer brand socks. So they are just a fun, patriotic design. Mm -hmm. You know, one is the stripes. The other is the stars. Yeah. I gave a pair to Pete. <laughs> and the second time I was back on Fox and Friends, I found out Pete was interviewing me. Mm -hmm. And he goes, Dean, so great to see you again. He goes, I still have your socks you gave me. I wear them all the time. They are my favorite pair. And Lisa, you know, a lot of people aren't familiar, but just a quick background on e-commerce. So we use Shopify. That's our platform. Mm -hmm. And it's almost like a game because live, you can track the number of visitors coming to your website. You can track live the number of purchases. And from a marketing standpoint, we're always trying to figure out, okay, what is it that we just did that yeah. causes a little bit of spike? <laughs> what is it that we did that's causing more purchases? And with that in mind, and when Pete said, Dean, they're my favorite pair. I wear them all this time. I said, Pete, please say that on national TV. <laughs> and Lisa, he did. And it was like an earthquake hit. Just the spike yeah. in traffic and just the spike in purchases. And he didn't say, he didn't lead with, okay, they're American made. He said, they are just my favorite pair of socks. They're incredibly comfortable. They are this fun, patriotic design. Mm -hmm. And that's why I've really shifted, you know, that whole fundamental philosophy now that first and foremost, we lead with an amazing product experience. That's right, because that's what the customer cares about. At, at the end of the day, they need for it to be something that they like and that's comfortable because no matter where it's made, if they can't feel good in it, they're not going to buy it and wear it. Oh, absolutely, Lisa. Now, after I've gotten over my anger issues, <laughs> I mean, now I've embraced it because if you read the tag, it says designed in Nashville, you know, produced in North Carolina. Uh -huh. But no one reads that until they have an incredible product experience. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then they're curious to see where it came from. And Lisa, let me do this since we've got some time. I'm going to show one more example. Sure. Yeah, please do. And any guesses on what the most ubiquitous, the most popular apparel item is? Um, a t-shirt. The t-shirt, yes. The sweat t-shirt. Oh, go Army. I should have known. <laughs> so Lisa, this is one that happens to be my personal favorite, but there are literally billions of t-shirts sold every year. Mm-hmm. And you touched on it there, our new sweat activated print innovation. But as much as I love Lisa that you and I can see each other, I wish you were sitting here right next to me. Because if you could feel this, Lisa, you'd be like, Dean, this has got to be the softest t-shirt I've ever felt. And Lisa, yeah. who doesn't love a nice soft t-shirt? Yeah. And then also, you know, I'm you know, highlighting the Go Army print. If you tried to feel the print, and I emphasize tried, because if you tried to feel it, you can hardly feel it because another intentional choice, we only use a soft hand water-based ink because think of a lot of the t-shirts that may be in your closet or people are tuning in. A lot of the t-shirts in your closet are that heavy plastic yeah. ink. And on a yeah. hot summer day, Lisa, it will stick to your chest. Yep. 
you wash it a few times, it will crack. And our t-shirts are just incredibly soft across the board. But you touched on it. We have this new sweat activated print innovation. So magically when you sweat, you know, this hidden message appears. And I've got a bottle I'm gonna grab. <laughs> okay. that I'm gonna go ahead and pretend this is like an old kindergarten style show and tell. <laughs> Yeah. And at West Point, it's all about go Army, uh-huh. beat Navy. So here's what happens when you sweat. <laughs> you can see that beat Navy yeah, appears. Oh, I love it. My husband's Navy. <laughs> well, he may not like it as much. Yeah, well, he'll it. think it's hilarious. He's retired but, Navy. but And my sister works for the Army. Mm-hmm. She's worked for the Army for since, whatever, 1987. So she's at Fort Sam well, in San Antonio. You'll have to show this to him, Lisa, because on the back, there's our vintage U.S. flag. We like to have subtle branding, but I'm going to spray again and even larger. What appears? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I love it. Beat but Navy then the, Navy again. One, the Navy one says beat Army, right? That's a sensitive subject, so we won't touch on that one. But Lisa, here's where I love to highlight this because people say, Dean, no offense. I don't care where it's made. Yeah. The shirt is just incredibly soft. I can't even feel the print. And then, wow. Yeah. This technology, I've never seen anything like it. But Lisa, then here's what happens. They will look at the tag and see that it says Made in USA and back to that 3% number. Mm -hmm. It will be like, nothing in my closet is American made. Yeah. And then they will be curious. And then they'll go to our website, authenticallyamerican.us. They'll learn the story and the ethos behind our brand. That's Lisa when we have an opportunity to be their new favorite brand, but it very much starts out with an incredible product experience. Yeah. And, and you, the word experience is so important. People forget that not only do you have to have a good product, but it needs to be an experience in some way for the customer or the client so that it becomes important to them for some reason. You know, you talking about e-commerce, I actually started my company's web and marketing strategy. So Uh I actually started developing websites in 95 when you had to do it with a text editor and then you had to dial up and upload the file. And so my first shopping cart, I actually developed it from scratch. I didn't even know how to code it. I had to go buy all these books and everything. So I love now that there are all these different platforms out there and that people can spend their time tweaking, you know, rather than having to build. So it's just funny to me when you're talking about e-commerce for me to remember back to those days. I mean, you go way back and understand and knew firsthand, you know, what it was like in the early days, because it's quite a bit different now. And the thing that you said about the anger, this is the other thing. If it was easy, everybody would be doing it. Oh yeah. And that's the thing. You realize it is hard. And, uh, you know, I'm working on a project now that's Mm -hmm. a bigger than us project. And it's been so hard. And sometimes I'm like, why can't people just see this? But then I'm like, hello, if it was that easy to see, everybody would be doing it. It wouldn't be disruptive. So no doubt about it. Yeah. Well, I have to tell everybody out there, the NASCAR driver that I work with, Colin Garrett, one of my clients, we're actually getting Dean's company to design and produce some apparel for us. So I'm not sure exactly when it'll be coming out. I think around November 11th, but we're really excited about that. Well, Lisa, you are highlighting something that also is passionate about me because there's three segments of our business. Mm -hmm. So, you know, this is one, our consumer brand, these socks. So that is our own authentically American branded. Okay. And I am wearing something that represents our collegiate license. So we have West Point. To your point, we also have the Naval Academy, Air Force Academy. We have all the military schools, include VMI and Citadel. Uh-huh. I'm here in Nashville and Music City. So those that are here are very familiar with Vanderbilt. Yep. In Belmont and MTSU. But we've just added some big ones as well, like Alabama, Roll Tide, you know, yeah. Auburn. So we've got some big ones. And I know you and I were talking Virginia Tech. Yeah, I got to get the Hokies <laughs> up in there. You Go got it. it. <laughs> But the third segment of our business, because there's consumer and collegiate, is the client side. Mm -hmm. And I love it, Lisa, because you and I are cut from the same cloth. We have similar values and DNA and so many business owners out there as well, so many charities out there. But what happened in the past is they didn't have a high quality American made choice that was competitively priced. It also had aligned values. 
Yes. And that's what we're providing for you and other business owners and other organizations, a chance to partner with a company with like-minded values. So in the past, you may have picked a Nike polo. Mm -hmm. You may have picked a Land's End Oxford. And none of that, first and foremost, is made here in the U.S. And when you look and you learn kind of some of the values and ideals that they embrace, it doesn't align with what you and I believe. Mm -hmm. And that's why I love that you and I are partnering. And I love it when we partner with hundreds of other business owners, because yeah. like you and I, they're cut from the same cloth. And Colin and his family are aligned with you. Both of his mm -hmm. brothers are active duty army. So they're a double blue star family. And we actually had somebody say to us the other week, well, why are you using them? You could use, and we're like, no, again, this is an intentional, intentional. choice <laughs> because the, this mm -hmm. company, the founder and the company align with our values. And this is somebody we want to be able to work with throughout our and Colin's entire career, which will hopefully, hopefully be 15 or 20 years because he's only 21. So, you know, oh, yeah. so a lot of people do make the choice just based on price, mm -hmm. but we don't, we make it, we make it based on the whole picture, not saying that the price isn't competitive. I'm just saying that you know we're like it's there's not even a question we don't even want to see the other stuff we don't want to see the prices because this is this is part of who we are supporting companies yeah. like y'all well lacy you're highlighting something that is a false stereotype that we've had a battle mm -hmm. because a lot of people are like well i love american made but the stereotype is well it's just way too expensive yep and that back to an intentional was another choice we made because most people love American made, but they don't want it to be too expensive. Most people love the values behind our company. You saw some of the amazing examples of our property, of our mm -hmm. products, but no one wants to pay double. Yeah. So from a business model choice, if you think back to the old Dell business model of go direct, uh -huh. another example of a more current direct one is Southwest Airlines. Yeah. If you want to fly on Southwest, you can't go to Travelocity. You can't go to Expedia. You can only book on Southwest.com. Mm -hmm. And it's the same way with us because in order for us to not only have an amazing product to be American made, but also be competitively priced, mm -hmm. we have to go direct. So yeah. if you, like you do, Lisa, want to partner with us, you work with us directly. Mm -hmm. You work with my team. You don't go to another third party promotional products distributor because if we're competitively priced now, when they buy it from us, they're going to mark it up. That's right. Or Lisa, from those entrepreneurs out there, if we need to be competitive, you know, mm -hmm. we've got to lower our price. And then it becomes very challenging to have a viable business. So we said it's going to be a longer, slower climb. Yeah. But when people are coming to us, they know the only place they can get it is authentically American. You know, you're not going to find us on Amazon. Mm -hmm. You're not going to find us in a bricks and mortar department store. And reason being, you know, back to being competitively priced. It was an intentional choice we had to make to go direct. Again, it's your business and you can make it anything yes. you want. You get to make those decisions. Mm -hmm. Other people would be like, oh, we have to be here. We have to be there because that's where everybody else is. Mm -hmm. And then they get in this race to the bottom that nobody can ever win. And you pick the route that you're going and you're sticking with it. So, but that brings up us talking about the team brings up that I want to let mm -hmm. people know out there, if you need apparel for whether it's for an organization or your company, or like for us, an NASCAR team, you can work directly with them and they'll not only design and manufacture the products, they'll also build your store. And if you need them to, they will handle the fulfillment and everything, which is great for us. I'm like, hello, I did that stuff long enough. I don't want to do yeah. it. I actually used to own a fulfillment company, Dean, oh, back you in the know. early 2000s. Yeah, but I'm like, that's just not my cup of tea. Um, but so, yeah, I mean, it's like the whole bundle. Go to them. You can get everything taken care of. And it's an honest company with great quality products. So just want everybody out there to know that that's a great option that y'all have. Well, Lisa, you're highlighting the fourth reason why somebody partners with us. And it's an important one, especially when you've got something you're focused on day to day, because everybody loves amazing product that we deliver. Mm -hmm. We also love that we're American made. We talk competitively priced. But if you remember that old Staples commercial with the easy button. Yeah. 
that's what our clients will say, Dean, I had no idea how easy mm-hmm. your team would make it because we've got graphic designers on the front end. Yep. You know, we will build online stores. You don't want to be shipping out of your garage. So we do all the fulfillment and everything. So at the end of the experience, I go, that was easy. Yeah, because usually now look, y'all, if you've never had to go through it, I'm going to tell you. Usually you not only have to find the product, you're working with somebody, promotional products, company or whatever. You have to find the products you want and you either have to get them to design or you have to provide the designs depending on who it is. And it can be a real pain. We actually used to design stuff um, for our clients, but you know, it can be a long drawn out process. And then you got to worry about where you're going to sell it and collecting all the sales tax and doing the fulfillment and customer service. I mean, it literally is a business in and of itself oh, that yeah. takes you away from your business. So just c- go to Authentically American and get them to do it all. And then you can spend your time doing what you're good at. Absolutely. And and we didn't set it up. I, we When Dean says, oh, you brought me into the next point. This is just coincidence because we didn't plan this y'all no. people that watch me know i never have a plan i totally fly by the seat of my pants so but for somebody new we didn't plan that i was going to say these things in this order no not at all and it's amazing how it's <laughs> all coming together here and i'm just enjoying our discussion yeah it's great mm-hmm. i want to ask you i want to make okay we've only been on about 30 minutes I'll, okay so i know you had the blank piece of paper yes and you and and you um assuming your first step was figuring out you know the values and the basis like that before you even started about the business itself right that's ultimately where i started and that's where my more expertise is you know been with some great companies like mars and procter and gamble and having been at army and west point i mean we started with the vision and the mission and the values and a lot of companies, Lisa, will have their values on the wall listed. They'll have them on our website. And to me, that's important. Yeah. But we wanted it to be so much more mm-hmm. than that because I'm not going to be involved in every decision. I'm not going to be around to go ahead and be involved in everything that we're doing. But we wanted these guiding light principles. We wanted these core values to really resonate with everybody that we hire in the future. So if I'm not here, or our sales director is not here, our creative director is not here. You know, people can think back to these core values that will help guide our decisions. That's so important. Mm-hmm. So important because you can go do your thing and not have to worry. And then your customers also know that there's consistency throughout the company. They don't have to worry about who am I going to be talking with today or who's filling my order today because everybody's on the same page. You got it, Lisa. And I'll tell you that what we really want is those to be ingrained in who we are so you don't even think about it. And I will tell you one story where I was tested. And this was the very first time I was on national TV back on Fox and Friends. And just to set the stage, so three days before that appearance is when Nike launched their Kaepernick campaign. Okay. And I was there. This was, I think, the original you know NASCAR connection because... A good friend of mine and one of our investors is Daryl Waltrip. Yep. So DW. And when I was invited to be on Fox and Friends, Lisa, I was incredibly nervous. I'm like, I did my homework. I'm like, there's 2 million people that tune in. So it made me nervous. And when I thought about who could join me, who is just an absolute TV pro, old DW. <laughs> yeah. Who, who better? <laughs> Who's better mm-hmm. than joining me? And, you know, they don't give you the script. They don't give you the questions, just like you didn't give me any prompting here on what we're doing. Mm-hmm. And when we showed up, I mean, I was up for weeks beforehand wondering what they're going to ask me. You were so nervous. Oh, I, I was. And, you know, at the very end of our segment, they said, well, guys, and this was a reference to me and old DW. Well, what do you think of a company that likes to promote that you kneel for the flag instead of stand? Mm-hmm. And you know, Daryl, and he's not shy words, but he wasn't sure what to say. And he says, well, 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 I don't like it. Mm -hmm. And here's what I said, Lisa, and one of our core values is all around respect. And even in the face of disagreement, we treat everybody with dignity and respect. And when they ask that question, what do you think? I said, first and foremost, I believe in the Constitution. Mm -hmm. And freedom of speech is so incredibly important. 
And we are defined by the choices we make. And we're being so intentional about the choices that we make. And I said, for me personally, I absolutely believe in standing. And it's two reasons why. Number one, I mentioned my family. Lisa, if you walked into our home and everyone's sitting down, our kids are sitting down, they just don't sit there. When you walk in, they stand up, they look in the eye and shake your hand because it's a sign of respect. Respect, yeah. In my background in the military, if the commanding officer walks in and you're sitting down, you just don't continue to sit in there. You stand up, you stand salute, up. Mm -hmm. and it's a sign of respect. And I don't care what Nike or anyone else is doing, Lisa. What's most important to me are the choices we're making. And yeah. we're being very intentional about who we are and the choices we're making. And back to the client side of our business, we want to partner with other organizations like yours. Mm -hmm. We want to partner with other businesses and charities who have like-minded values and commitment to the same ideals because that's who we want to work with. Not everyone's going to love what we're doing, but there are millions of people, millions of businesses out there who have never heard of us that now love the opportunity to go ahead and partner with us. And that story brings up another really great point for the audience that it's very important that you have your values, you have the things that you stand for and that you stand by them because you don't need everybody to be your customer. Mm -hmm. You only need a certain number of customers, but you need the customers who are right for you. So when you go around trying to please everybody, you please nobody and you end up in all the mess like a lot of companies have now. That's actually, I'm not trying to plug my book, but I'm just going to say that's another part in the book. It's about surrounding yourself with the right people and standing up for what you believe in so that th that's the only way that you can, that the people who have the same beliefs as you, that's the only way that you can find each other. If you're um, not talking about it, they have no idea that you do. And it's totally fine. Like you said, it's totally fine. If somebody disagrees with you. They can work with a different company but the people who agree with you now know that you're there and they can choose to work with you well lisa where were you in your book four years ago <laughs> i don't know because <laughs> that would have been really helpful advice back then because i gave into the idea that we needed to be all things to all people mm -hmm. And it's we very common. That's very, very common. And we were literally drowning in an opportunity. I mean, chasing every little thing, mm -hmm. going everywhere. And as we really stood back and looked at some of the data, you know, we realized that we don't need to be all things to all people, that there are people like you, there are organizations and companies like you that really get who we are, mm -hmm. that love what we're doing, that resonates. So that client side of our business is a B2B. So there's a sales cycle. Because we would have some companies we'd be talked to do six months, a year or more. Mm -hmm. And it was a waste of our time. And yes. what we found, for example, veteran owned businesses, veteran operated businesses, veteran focused charities, they have the same like minded values and DNA. And that six month sales cycle goes to six minutes. Yeah. They hear our story, they get it, and they understand who we are. And this is just a quick math problem that we looked at as well, Lisa, because that vision to build this iconic American brand, that billion dollar brand, I mean, it's massive to think that we could have a billion dollar brand. But when you think that the total apparel industry every year spends 300 billion, it's crazy, 300 billion, our market share only needs to be one third of 1%. 1%. That's right. Yeah. So we don't need to be all things, all people. Yep. One we third need... of 1% of the people. And hello, you know that there are people in there that that you align with. Oh, absolutely. So there are a lot of people out there like you, Lisa. There's a lot of people like me out there. There's a lot of people who are tuning in right now that we want to find and we want to reach. And whether you want to buy our own consumer brand, one of these fun, amazing pair of socks, <laughs> whether you are an Alabama Roll Tide fan or soon to be, we'll add Virginia Tech. Or if you're a business owner or lead a charity, you know, we would love the opportunity to partner with you. Yeah. And so look, y'all, in a few weeks, I don't know, I think it's going to be around Veterans Day. Y'all have to make sure that you come to my site, LisaWitzFrown.com, because I'll put them there when we have Colin's apparel site up so that y'all can check out some of the apparel that they're making for them. Dean, I want you to tell us about some of the companies that you partner with, because this is something that people probably aren't thinking about. You have, well, how many employees do you have directly? So 
just to clarify our business model, Lisa, so we use contract manufacturing and most of our workforce is contracted. Yeah. So we can scale up. So yeah. we have manufacturing in 12 states. Okay. So these fun socks, for example, we produce these in North Carolina. You know, that T-shirt that I showed you, we produce that in Texas. Mm -hmm. You know, the polo and quarter zip, our outerwear, we produce in California. So all across the U.S. in 12 states. But none of that labor is on our payroll. And that was what I was going to point out. You're building your company. But while you're building it, you're helping build other businesses throughout the entire country. You're Absolutely. providing opportunity for these other small businesses that they wouldn't have otherwise. Absolutely. And we're, we're very narrowly focused, Lisa, our core team on sales, marketing, and customer service. Mm -hmm. But we lean so heavily on our manufacturing partners, our contract manufacturers, because without amazing product, I mean, nothing else matters. Yes. So I've visited all of our factories. I love visiting factories because you know, we are in the technology age, but there are a lot of people that love the fact that they produce something like these socks and that people are going to put them on their feet or put it on their back. And it's their new favorite. Yeah. And Where's I, the factory I'm, in North Carolina? So it's not far outside of Raleigh. Yeah. Greensboro. Shoot. Oh, it doesn't matter. That's OK. See, but see, I'm close to Raleigh. Yeah. And I think it had to be right in our area. I mean, I'm in Virginia, but I'm just an hour north of the airport, RDU. And so yes. this whole area and see like Burlington Industries started in with well, our headquarters were in Greensboro, North Carolina. Yeah, yeah. Yep. So, so it's not far region, from you at all. Yeah, the whole region was heavy, heavy textiles. You got it. Yeah. So how do you go about finding the companies that you partner with? So most of my background, Lisa, was in business development, sales, and marketing. So this was after the Army. Mm -hmm. So a big part of our initial client base came from here, my phone. Okay. Because knew a lot of business owners, knew a lot of CEOs, knew a lot of executives. Mm -hmm. So that's where we started on the client side because one of the lessons I learned at Procter & Gamble and Mars, if you're going to do what we're doing and building a brand from scratch, it's incredibly difficult because no one knows who you are. Mm -hmm. You don't have an audience. And are you familiar, Lisa, with the brand Swiffer? Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Yeah. So Swiffer is one of Procter & Gamble's most successful billion dollar brands. Mm -hmm. And it was launched in 2002 when I was at P&G. Oh. Lisa, I still remember this day, the year one marketing budget, the year one marketing budget alone was $100 million. That's just mind blowing. 100 million. So, the reason you knew about it and probably everyone on this call is they said, okay, we've got a great idea. We've got te technology. We just need to tell everybody about it, mm -hmm. which was wonderful. It was great to be there when that happened, but I don't have 100 million. <laughs> yeah. I, I've got about that much. And that's what I really wrestled with, Lisa. How, with this very clear vision in my mind on what I want Authentically American to be about, how do we go ahead and build this brand? Yeah. And that's when I was doing my due diligence and putting together my business plan. And I realized that organizations like yours, businesses, charities across the board, they spend eight billion a year, eight billion alone on branded apparel. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, that's where the light bulb went off because I don't have to convince you, Lisa, to spend money you're not spending. You're yeah. already going to spend money and now we're giving you a choice. Yep. And to give two ends of the spectrum. So on that client side, I love it when we're working with Fortune 500 companies. So a big Fortune 100 company here in Nashville, the largest hospital company in the world is HCA. Okay. And Lisa, they have 300,000 employees. 300,000. Mm -hmm. And our initial entry point is their veteran ERG, which ERG is a veteran employee resource group. Yeah. They have, Lisa, nearly 50,000 veterans. Wow, that's amazing. So, I love the fact that, you know, orders from ACA will be thousands. Mm -hmm. But we'll hit on my favorite word again, intentional, because a choice we made, you know, as much as I love HCA, mm -hmm. I'm a small business and I love entrepreneurship. And small business owners also want to buy branded apparel to represent their company. So an intentional choice we made is we want our minimums to be low. Yeah. And 
for embroidery. For example, the quarter zip I'm wearing with the West Point logo, that's embroidered. Mm -hmm. If you want something that's embroidered from us, the minimum is only 12. Wow. And that mixed, Lisa, it's not just 12 of the same. Mm -hmm. It's a mix of sizes. It's also a mix of styles and colors. So we have sole proprietors that say, Dean, that's easy because I wear my company. I wear my logo every day. Mm -hmm. So they may pick two or three polos. They make two or three quarter zips, a hoodie, a jacket. They pick, pick a bunch of items. So it's easy. Yeah, definitely. Well, and what we want is somebody that starts with 12. Their business grows a year or two later, then they're ordering 25, then they're ordering 100, then they're ordering mm -hmm. 1,000. And we love to be on that journey with them. That's really cool. But that gives you two ends of the spectrum from 300,000 yeah. down to sole proprietor. The veteran business resource group, so that's a great idea. Mm -hmm. And that's an example of getting, okay, you, even if they had come to you and said, we want you, we want you to take all of, you know, provide all of their apparel. Y'all couldn't have handled that because you're a small company. So you intentionally, again, the word intentional, you selected, yeah. get your toe in the door in this place in a niche that is very aligned with you anyway. And who knows, at some point you might feel like you want more, but you don't ever have to take, do more with them for it to be a great account for you. And absolutely, absolutely. Uh, but so that niching down and that, again, not trying to be everything to everybody, but picking a market. And so that that basically is a market within a market. If you look at the whole company as a market and then that one group within it. At least I'll tell you back to God, family and country. This is where faith came in, because two years ago I wanted HCA in the worst way, but we weren't ready. Yeah. And we just now started just a couple months ago, discussions with HCA, and now we're ready. That's awesome. So whether they order 12 or 12,000 or more, you know what, we're ready. We've got the supply chain. We've got our whole logistics and you supply can chain everything established. What people don't realize is that growing too fast can be worse, oh, yeah. more deadly than growing too slow. Because no you, doubt it about it. totally gets out of control mm -hmm. and you can't, you can't get, catch up with it. Are you still there? Yeah. Can you hear me? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I heard my voice echo. And then when I didn't hear you, I thought maybe I'd lost you. Um, still loud and clear. Kim Lee is just saying that mm -hmm. she said she loves your intentional decisions, that we can choose to do the right thing. Well, I don't know Kim Lee, but I love Kim Lee. Yeah. Because... Oh, I know Kim Lee. She, she's actually mm -hmm. a friend of mine. And, oh, um, wonderful. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, she's a great person and definitely mm -hmm. her values align with yours. So. Wonderful. What would you say is, well, I know you talked about the anger and everything. What mm -hmm. would you say was your biggest hurdle or your biggest problem? And then what would you say was your biggest surprise, like your a good surprise that you weren't expecting? Well, Lisa, the biggest challenge and opportunity from day one, and that challenge continues to this day, and that is all around brand awareness and getting the word out. Yeah. And that was why I was so thankful when you invited me to be your guest, because now a whole new audience will hear about our story for the first time. Mm -hmm. And that will be a challenge, I think, forever because, you know, apparel back to that $300 billion number. I mean, it's a massive industry and they're big brands spending millions and millions of advertising. Mm -hmm. So that will always be a challenge out there. But probably the biggest surprise and the biggest blessing is national TV. Yeah. I mean, to be invited once, would have been incredible to be invited twice would have blown me away. I mean, three times would have been like, what, how does it even happen? But Lisa, it's been 16 times. You know, like I said earlier, I'm like all the time. I'm like, there's Dean again. Whoa. So how did you get on there the first time? So I think it really comes down, Lisa, to three things. One, you know, I'm on my knees every day in prayer and that's mm -hmm. how we start every day asking for guidance and inspiration. And I think the second one, it was an intentional choice, not having a hundred million to invest in marketing. I said, what we need to do is we need to get as much free press and PR, as much earned media mm -hmm. as we can, because we have this feel good American story. So that was the strategic choice to pursue that. But one of my mantras, Lisa, the third one is around, it's not what you know, 
Tuna. Tuna. Yeah. And I go out of my way to invest in others. I go out of my way to invest in people. And when we said, okay, we want to go ahead and get the word out. We want to get some free press and PR. Mm -hmm. I told everybody I knew. And somebody reached back out and said, Dean, would you like to be on Fox and Friends? And I said, well, would I ever? I mean, I would absolutely love it. And he said, well, no guarantees. Mm -hmm. But Brian Kilmeade, you know, yeah. one of the hosts of Fox and Friends, yeah. was in the facility three years ago. This was one of our suppliers. Okay. It was in our facility three years ago. I just happened to have his business card. And I've Go never ahead. had any communication. But Dean, why don't I just send an email? Mm-hmm. And Lisa didn't hear anything for a month. And then a month later, got a call from one of the producers saying, hey, we heard about your story. We think it'd be a great one to have you on around 9-11. And I'm oh, like, wow. That's awesome. And we weren't ready. We didn't even have a website. We didn't have our 800. Now we had nothing. So <laughs> it was a sprint for 30 days to get it all ready. Mm -hmm. But what an incredible blessing because overnight, I mean, 2 million people. Yeah. That's so interesting because I always just assumed that you had a connection through Pete Hegseth or something. No, we, we didn't. I met Pete that first time, but yeah, you know, that's think, funny. Well, and you talking about you reaching out to your network and then your connection, having this business card that he basically had held back. When you read my book, I'm going to send it to you. When you read it, yes. you'll see my cousin. That's how he broke into the music industry is mm -hmm. he had he was a reporter when he was in high school at on um, civic centers and he would meet these music managers and stuff. Anyway, it's very interesting. But it was the same thing. He kept these cards. And when oh, he yeah. ran across this opportunity that he thought was the right opportunity, he called one of those people and he ended up getting this band a deal. He was only 21 and their first song mm -hmm. was Grammy nominated or album yeah. or whatever. So it just goes to show you, I have another friend that says, your net worth is your network or your network is your net worth. I'm whatever, you know what I'm saying? I might be getting the words mm -hmm. opposite, but basically it's not, as you said earlier, I think you said, it's not what you know, it's who you know. And you have to have a strong network, but too many people look at networking as just like, oh my gosh, I have like 10,000 followers. You would rather it would be better to have 10 of the right mm -hmm. people as connections in your network than 10,000 of the wrong people or the people who just don't care. You know, they're connected and they don't pay any attention. Lisa, I could not agree more. And, you know, networks sometimes will have a bad connotation to it. And even that mantra around it's not what you know. Yeah. It's, who you know, because it's all like, well, what can Lisa do for me? I mean, right. who is Lisa to know what's her connections? And I always try and spin that around. You know, you know, I embrace servant leadership. And to me, it's always like, well, what can I do for Lisa? Mm -hmm. Or if I meet somebody new, how can I help them? Yeah. And there's a great book somebody gave me, The Go-Giver. Okay. I haven't heard of that. I need to get it, it. It's a phenomenal book. And it really is about that mindset on how do you serve others? How do you mm -hmm. help go out of your way to make a difference for others. And somebody gave it to me and said, Dean, you're a go-giver. I'm yes. like, what are you talking about? And they said, read it and you will get it. And I had never thought of it this way, but this gentleman, Berg, and I'm forgetting his net last name, but go-giver is the name of the book. And it is all about this philosophy, this strategic choice that you can run your business with the mindset on how do you serve others? Mm -hmm. How do you go ahead and be a great partner with your suppliers? How do you have a phenomenal relationship with your customers? And it's that go-giver mindset. And when you do that, you're building for the long term because it's built on integrity and sincerity. It's not mm -hmm. built on what can you do for me. When we were on a mastermind call uh, last week, a group of us, and we were talking about how, I mean, I'm great at helping other people and I'm not good at helping myself. And <laughs> so we were give, people were like giving their like, like one or two sentence intro you know, this is what I do, who I am, this is what I do. And I'm like, you know, giving people great advice. And then it comes to me and I'm like stumbling over myself. And we were just talking about that, how most people are like that, that and, or except people who are really narcissists, but right. a lot of people are really like that. And, and this guy was saying, 
because we, our group, the, those of us in there, we're so used to thinking about other people and serving other people that we don't spend the time thinking about ourselves, you know, and it's hard. It's hard for me to sit down and think about myself. I don't like it. I want to be thinking about other people and what, I, you know, what their, what their stuff is. So. At least I'll, I'll highlight one other intentional choice and it was a strategic one. So, you know, part of our business, we work with charities. We work with nonprofits who have a much greater calling than worrying about what T-shirt they're wearing or what polo or hat they're wearing. But the intentional choice we made, if you're a charity, if you're a nonprofit, we provide our goods and services at cost. Yeah. And that is a way for us to go ahead and make a difference. That's a way for us. If you're a charity, you know, we can help you build your brand and raise some money in the process. And we don't even talk about this, but one of the secondary benefits that we had no idea how big it was going to be back to the challenge around brand awareness. Mm -hmm. We have thousands and thousands of new customers that heard about us the first time because they're wearing their favorite charity's new t-shirt and they'll buy with the way who made it. Yeah. Authentically American. They're like, this t-shirt is incredibly soft. It's my new favorite. Oh, who made it? authentically American. I never heard of them. And then they go find us. So yeah, although we're making a difference, that's almost a form of advertising for us. Yeah. And that's, but this is very important for people to understand. That's not why you did it. No, you're doing it because it's the right thing to do to help other people. And a side effect of doing that right thing is that it is coming back to you. I can't tell you how much we appreciate y'all doing that for our team. Um, as you know, we promote um, through the team, we promote pro bono nonprofits that help veterans in the military community, oh, families, yeah. mil veteran entrepreneurs, military spouse owned businesses and so forth. And one of the things that we did when we crowdfunded for Daytona two years ago, well, be two, whatever, and, not, and right before COVID, um, mm -hmm. crowdfunded for Daytona. And we had never done a crowdfunder and our goal was 200,000. We beat it in like 30 days and we and we were able to raise enough beyond what we had to have to raise because we don't try to we don't try to raise money enough to raise and then extra whatever we have extra we give it to the nonprofits. but yeah. that race we were able to pay for stem cell treatments for a veteran who has multiple sclerosis from exposure to chemicals and active duty and that to me it it just is, it feels so good to be helping other people. And then oh, for y'all to do what you're doing to help us make this apparel available and everything. If we, you know, we won't, we don't look at it as money maker. We look at it as a way to get help, get the word out about the resources that we're trying to spread awareness of, but what y'all are doing, the selling it at cost to help us get it out there. I greatly appreciate that. Well, absolutely. And that's just another way for us to make a difference and yeah. help serve others. Well, I've had you for an hour, so I better let you go. <laughs> They're but, probably like, I'm tired of hearing Dean's stories. <laughs> no, no, we could talk forever. I mean, I could tell mm -hmm. we could talk forever. But tell people how they can find, how they can get to Authentically American and order and find out more about y'all. So Lisa, the best way to do that is go to authenticallyamerican.us, our website, authenticallyamerican.us, and one more intentional plug. So that do, .us was an intentional choice because it aligns so well with the equity of our brand. And if somebody wants to say, well, those sound like pretty cool socks. Yeah. Or if somebody said that technology sounds amazing, mm -hmm. you know, you can go and when you check out, enter the discount code FOUNDER. F-O-U-N-D-E-R, founder at checkout, and that will save you 25%. Awesome. That's great. Look, founder at checkout and save 25%. That's awesome. Authenticallyamerican.us. And if anybody's listening, anybody wants Dean on your show, whatever, media, podcasts, or whatever, contact him through LinkedIn or through Authentically American or message me and I can hook y'all up. Awesome. This is my book. Uh, this is my book, Disrupt Your Now, that I was telling you about. I'll send you one. And this is, can you get it? This is the last yeah. one I wrote, Boomer Cash Out. Uh -huh. I wrote, this is the one I wrote in the weekend because it was everything that was already in my head that I preached to uh -huh. clients. And I, I was like, you know what? I'm so sick of preaching it. If I put it in a book, maybe they'll listen because you know how people oh, are. Yeah. So, um, but anyway, I'll, I'll get your address after, um, 
I'll send you a message and get your address and send you a copy of Well, of Lisa, I would love to read it and look forward to the second edition coming out and building a brand. <laughs> I mean, I love the branding just on the cover and the colors that you chose because it really pops. So you did an Thanks. amazing job. Thank you. And thank you so much for your time tonight. I really, really appreciate you being on here with me. Well, we'll certainly keep the dialogue going. Lisa, I was honored to be your guest. Thank you. Thanks. And everybody, next week, I'm having Wes. I forget Wes's last name. He, uh, ah, sorry. His name is Wes. Y'all probably already know who he is. He's been on Naked and Afraid three times, and he's an entrepreneur. Oh. So he's going to be on the show next Tuesday night. And I'm not going to even guess his last name because I'll get it wrong. I'm terrible with names. All right. See you later. Thanks, Dean. And I'll see y'all next Tuesday. Thank you, Bye. everybody. Bye-bye.